that we are one and we are one in you, O God. Your ear is not too far to hear, nor too far to save, mighty Father. So thank you, O God. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness, O God. Thank you for the breath of life.
17th evening of our congregational prayer and fasting. As you are redeemed children, we are here, O oh God. Father, tonight our declaration in this week of supernatural victory, whatever the devil is challenging us, as we stand firm in Christ, we shall have our victory, O oh Jesus. Every form of attack against our lives, our families, our generation, our health, our wealth, our career, our ministry, our spiritual life. Tonight we take victory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. As the man of God taught us last night, we declare we will operate on our mandate you have given to us, O God. Father, still the devil is challenging. We cancel it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for authority. 
Lord, the devil and the agents are still trying that we will not complete this 21 days of prayer and fasting. We take you on complete victory. We cancel any form of disturbance or distraction from house of prayer family in the name of Jesus. No death, no accidents, no sicknesses, no calamity, no affliction, no sorrows, no division, no conflicts. The devil will not reach any of our territory with anything. We shall successfully complete the name of Jesus, O oh God. We declare and prophesy tranquility, peace, unity, love, blood of Jesus, protection and prosperous and the victory, O oh God. Tonight, O oh God, we cover the entire house of prayer family. Lord, we pray your presence is with us, O oh God. Your presence, your great presence is with us, O oh God. You will watch over us. And we arrest the strong men of Canini and loosen the Holy Spirit tonight, O oh God. Speak to us. Speak to us, O oh God. Anoint the servant of God. We are ready to receive. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Please take your seat. Praise the Lord and good evening, church. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good all the time. And that is his. Amen. Shall we put our hands together, give a wonderful clap offering to our awesome, loving God. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's turn to a neighbor and just wave at him or her and say, my neighbor, I am blessed to see you on the 17th evening of our prayer and fasting. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm also blessed to have, I am sure, our elder Ravindra other is back at the church. Hallelujah. Let's go. Amen. Elder, please stand. I am sure some of the people may not know he's one of our elder. He has uh, shortly removed to India. Now he's back. We pray he will look, uh, settle in Intola. Hallelujah. Amen. A mighty man of God, a wonderful teacher, a teacher of the word of God. Elder, we are happy. Amen. He came here two days before to see the church. He was the thank God for when he left it to us. Uh, we just began the construction. Uh, we give thank you, Elder. Welcome home. Amen. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. Are we excited to receive the word? Are we excited? Hallelujah. Tonight, Pastor is going to offload everything he carried from Limulunga, Mongu, Lusaka to the Copper Belt. Hallelujah. Amen. Everything he has to offload it. Hallelujah. Amen. And we have been blessed. Truly, I am blessed. You know, most of the such events, we are more prone to preach the message that uh, excite people. But this time, the man of God was teaching us the nutshell of the gospel. The heart of the gospel, even for our victory. It is easy to say we have victory, but there are things we need to put in place according to the word of God. So, Pastor, we are so blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. So, let's put our hands to the welcome, Reverend Mansa, to come and minister the word of God. Welcome, Pastor. Let's give him a hand clap once again, even the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Once again, Pastor, I would like to thank God for you and the entire leadership of the church for this platform of faith that you accorded to me and, of course, many other servants of the Lord that uh, I came before me. I would not want to take it lightly, lest uh, I'm found wanting in the presence of the Lord. Such occasions or opportunities never just come anyhow. They come by the grace of God. So I thank God for you, Pastor, the leadership. And uh, we want to thank God for our elder who has just returned from India. And uh, today, I purposely, I wanted to attingle Brother Charles. How are you, Brother Charles? Is that you? No, it's not you. Charles, where is he? Oh, come on. I'm looking there. <laughs> Jimmy, eh? Okay. Look at that now. I thought I was going to make it. Mm. Okay, Brother Charles, we thank God for you. I don't want to forget your name. And it's Brother Jimmy, eh? 
Ok. Oh, aleluya. Oh, aleluya. Today it's a, I want to call it a special day uh, for me and uh, I believe for the entire assembly. Uh, seeing that uh, uh, this may be the last uh, day we are going to meet before we can meet again. And my prayer is that the Lord who gave us this opportunity to tell in his presence in this manner is going to undertake for us in such a way that by the time we come to the very end of this service, each and every one of us here will have something we are going to hold on to in the form of a testimony. I'm one person who does not believe in having to come to a place of fellowship and go back the same way we came. My prayer this evening, like I've always prayed, is that through the preaching of the word and everything that the Lord is going to do, uh, for sure, somebody here will hold on to something or will pick on something that they are going to hold on to for the rest of their lives. We are talking about uh, standing in Christ for supernatural victories. This is a profound theme, and we cannot afford to mess it up. This is, it's for this reason, this evening, I pray that the Lord may help me uh, do justice to the word of God. So quickly, let me request that uh, we turn our Bibles to the book of John, chapter 14, where we shall read uh, from verse 12. But for the sake of uh, building up or having a background of what is contained in verse 12, uh, we may be compelled to read from, from verse 1. I know that to or cost us some time, but I believe it may be worth it. John chapter 14, a reading from verse 12, but like I said, for the sake of having to establish for ourselves a background of what is contained in verse 12, we are going to begin to read from verse 1. And after we've read from the book of John, we may have to marry this passage with something that will come from the book of Luke. And we shall see how the Lord shall lead us. But for now, let me request that I go before you if you have found the passage. I'm reading from the KJV Bible, and the Bible reads as follows. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whither, and whither I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith, saith, saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices, it suffices us. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, a Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how saith pain? Show us the Father. Believest thou not that I am in, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, it doth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. 
Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And the greater works than these shall he do, because I go back to my Father. Luke chapter, chapter 18. Luke chapter 18. Bear with me for my stumbling as I was trying to read. Remember, I'm not as young as I used to be. If I told you I'm skiste, do not marvel. Chapter 18, reading from verse 28 up to verse 30. Did I say Luke? Chapter 18, verse 28 to 30. I beg your pardon. It shouldn't be chapter 28, verse 28. Okay. I found it. Chapter 18, a reading from verse 1 up to verse 11. Verse 8, rather. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, our avenger, that our God is so very faithful, Our God is so very faithful who will come through for us. Hallelujah. You shall not muzzle an ox when it treats the corn. And the laborer deserves his wages. You and me, we deserve our wages. If at all given the calling placed upon our lives, from day one to this day and the days to come, we shall be seen to render service before God. There is every possibility that our God is so very faithful, who is not like man that he may change his mind, will surely undertake for you and me in whatsoever area of needs. Now, here is one observation that I made. One cannot be able to stand in the mandate without believing. When we were reading the scriptures here, when we should have begun to read from verse 12 of the book of John chapter 14, for the sake of laying for ourselves a foundation, a good one for that matter, we began to read from verse 1, where we saw Jesus as was speaking to the disciples, he said, let not your heart be troubled, because I go to the Father to prepare a place for you. Where I'm going to be, you shall also be. And from nowhere, one of the disciples by the name of Thomas began to ask, Given the fact that Jesus, at one point, he went on to say, where I'm going, you know. So Thomas poses a question. How can you say that we know? We don't know. Now, when I look at Thomas, I see an element of anxiety and fear. And coupled with unbelief. Now, there is that which Jesus said to him. But without having to be labor on that point, let's move on to... Philip, who also poses a question, show us the Father. When you look at Philip, you also see the same element of anxiety, fear, coupled with unbelief. It is from that point that we see Jesus say something. Let me just find it. It's from that point that we see Jesus say something. Jesus said, have I been so long time with you 
And yet hast thou not known me, a Philip? He that has seen me hath seen the Father. And how saith thou then, show us the Father? And as he moves on, according to verse 10, he says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not unto myself. But the Father that dwelleth me, that dwelleth in me, he doth the works. Check it, verse 11. He continues to use the word believe. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the very work's sake. As if that is not enough. When we go to verse 12, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Brethren, the Bible says, In a council of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Allow me to point the fact that from this short passage, we see Jesus using one of the same word more, more than two times. A confirmation of the fact that if there's one thing that was lacking in the lives of the disciples was the issue of faith. That's why today, having met in this manner, we want to make a declaration that without faith, we cannot be able to believe. We cannot be able to please our God. Without faith, we cannot be able to emerge victorious in as far as our theme is concerned. Three times Jesus is talking about one and the same word, believe. When you look at the attitude of the disciples, it may be similar to yours and mine today. They exhibited an element of unbelief, of course coupled with anxiety and fear, especially after hearing that Jesus was going back to be with the Father. From verse 1, it tells them, let not your hearts be troubled. We pick it from there and understand the fact that surely the disciples could have been gripped with fear and anxiety coupled with unbelief. So this issue of unbelief could not have only manifested that time. Even today, it does manifest. And it's incumbent on you and me to see to it that we work around this whole issue or else to emerge victorious in as far as supernatural occurrences are concerned, may something not, may not become a reality. There is no way you and me can be able to stand in the absence of having faith. It's practically impossible. Is it yesterday or the other day I told you we believe in one we are not able to see. Much as he is here in the spirit, but physically speaking, we cannot be able to see him. For us to continue to relate with him, it will take faith. And in the absence of faith, there is no way we can even think of doing anything for him. This is why this evening we are saying, it will take somebody to believe for such a one to experience supernatural victories. In the absence of faith, there is no way you and me can be able to experience supernatural victories. This work of which we are part, which we are called for, it's a work that demands that faith may manifest in your life and my life before we can think of overcoming our enemy. Hallelujah. One cannot be able to stand in the mandate without believing. No wonder when we go to the book of Hebrews, the Bible makes it very, very clear that without faith, none of us here can be able to please our God. It takes faith. It takes a position of faith. It takes a, a position where somebody is able to believe in the one who has called him for such a one to be able to emerge victorious. This evening, I have a few things that I'd want to share with you in line with this title of the message, which we're calling the benefits of standing in the mandate. But before I can do that, let me highlight something from the book of Luke, which we read, which book, which passage I'd want to marry with that which we read from the book of John. We saw an account to do with the widow and this man that had no regard for God and of course for fellow man. 
Now, this widow kept on going before this man who was so pompous in nature to seek vengeance because there were some people who must have been troubling her. She kept on going to this man who could not help her, but one day he came back to his senses and said, wait a minute, what is it that I'm doing? I continue coming. The continue coming of this lady may wear me down. Before that happens to me, let me just do that which she's asking from me. The man went ahead and did it. Now, it was a parable which Jesus was giving. And Jesus says, look at what this godly man is able to do. Can't your father who is in heaven be able to avenge you? He will avenge you speedily. However, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on earth? If there's anything that was a concern on the part of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our Savior, it was the issue of faith. When I look at the passage, I see a lamentation. I see a concern. I see Jesus lamenting, wondering as to whether when he was going to back, come back, he was going to find anyone standing in the faith. Faith, brethren, it's a big issue given our calling. It's an ingredient to any battle we are going to wage given our theme. In the absence of faith, there's no way we can think of winning any battle. It is too much of Jesus talking about one and the same thing. I see it as a concern on his part. I see it as a lamentation. You can imagine, as he's giving a parable, he tells the disciples that look at the ungodly man. In as far as what he has done is concerned. Can't God who is above this ungodly man do the same thing for you without delay? However, when the Son of Man shall come, will he find faith on earth? That's not a small lamentation. It's a big issue. It's a big issue Jesus was able to pick in the lives of the disciples. No wonder when we read from the book of John, he told them, do not be troubled in your hearts. He must have seen it that these people are desperate. He must have seen it that these people are anxious. He must have seen it that these people are full of fear. He must have seen a people who were lacking a proper foundation of faith. When we are talking about standing firm in Christ, it's not something we can do without faith. It does not require you and me to amass a lot of wealthy for us to stand. It only takes a faith, which we cannot be able to buy from ShopRite or any other place. Standing fame in Christ for supernatural victories. In the absence of faith, we may be wasting our time talking about this kind of a theme. This is why this evening the Lord is calling on you and me to begin to embrace the aspect of faith for us to be able to stand firm in Christ and eventually emerge victorious in as far as supernatural events are concerned. Now, what kind of faith or belief system was Jesus talking about here? What kind of faith or belief system that Jesus was referring to? Which we can be able to learn one or two things from. When I try to do the study, I discover that there cannot be any other kind of faith except the sacrificial type. Call it the risk type, where maybe you can even be put to shame. Why the sacrificial type? It has to do with the time when you and me can forego certain things of our lives. Peter Asked Jesus, given the story to do with the young rich ruler. The young rich ruler came to Jesus, Master. To cut a long story short, a time came when Jesus posed the question, you know, gave an instruction to the young, young rich ruler. He told him, Go and sell all your assets and give them to the poor. This man was claiming to know all the commandments of our Lord. Just like many of us here may be claiming to know everything about God. But Jesus put him to the test. Because this man, when he was claiming to know all the commandments of our Lord, what he didn't know is that the commandments of our Lord are to do with love. 
When we go to the book of Matthew, is chapter 22 there, you are going to discover that yet there was a, a lawyer was trying to find out as to what could be the greatest commandments. And Jesus in answer said, Thou shalt love your God with all your heart and with all your soul, and of course with all your heart. This is the first, and the second is like the first. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So basically speaking, the commandments of God have to do with love. If you are to check the Ten Commandments from the book of Exodus, you are going to discover that the first part, the first four commandments have to do with the love of God. They have to do with the relationship with man and God. And the last, they have to do with the relationship between man and man. So, the young man, the rich young man, claimed he knew all the command, but he was lacking something, which Jesus pointed out. So he tells him, go and sell your wealthy, and thereafter proceed to give to the poor. And the young rich ruler, when he was told such a thing, he became downcast. Now it is from there where I would like to pick it as I introduce or bring in the aspect or the, the character of Peter. After he was downcast and he walked out, whether he walked out or he tiptoed out, I may not know. But I should think he must have moved like a snake out of the sea. Because he could not accept to do what Jesus told him. And then Jesus says how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. And of course he said other things. And then it was from that point that Peter wanted to find out. How about us? that have left everything to follow you. What can you say? Already Peter was gripped with fear. And then Jesus tells him, do not worry. Because there is manifold blessings for you in the time now and the time to come. As long as you are in service, there are manifold blessings to come for you in this time or in this generation and the time to come. Now, we see the element of sacrifice there. When Peter says, we've left everything to follow you. That's why today we are saying, when Jesus was talking about this kind of faith and the belief system, we are saying that this cannot be anything else but the type that is sacrificial, the type that is risky. When you go to Matthew chapter 10, reading from the 37, you're going to discover the Bible is saying, take up your cross. Or he that loveth his mother, father, is not worthy of me. And from there, he also points out the fact that we, should, we ought to take our cross. If we fail to do so, we are not worthy of him. We see sacrifice there. So when we're talking about faith as being a prerequisite for you and me to stand in firm in Christ, it is because of what we're seeing in the word of God. And it's for this reason we are declaring that in the absence of faith, there's no way we can be able to stand firmly. Remember, we are not just talking about standing. We are to, we're also talking about standing firmly. We are trying to consolidate the thought by adding up the word firm to the word stand so that we can get the actual meaning. Now, to stand firmly in Christ, it will take faith. And the kind of faith is a type that is full of sacrifice. It is a risk type, brethren. It is a type when you, may, and you and me may be required to forego all our pleasures. It is a type where you and me may forego our own jobs. It's a type where you and me may forego our own a place of our board. Look at Abraham. He is told, leave the land of your fathers. And go to a place that I shall show you. The Bible says about Abraham that he believed. Now, that kind of faith, it is full of sacrifice. You can imagine living a place where you've lived all your lifetime. All your friends are in there. All the business connections are in there. And then God tells you, leave. Now, when we're saying this kind of faith here is full of sacrifice, we know what we are talking about. Many of us would brag about having faith. But when we look at them, we're going to discover it is not true. Because there are certain things they may be treasuring. There are times, brethren, when God is ministering to us, he may demand that you 
forget about what you could have been doing just to follow him. Because when you look at the aspect of following and standing, they may mean one and the same thing. Whoever stands can also follow. And whoever may follow can also be able to stand. Jesus tells his disciples, according to the book of Luke, if you follow me, and having left all your assets, just for my sake, manifold blessings are coming. So I would want to use the word stand and following interchangeably. If one can be able to follow, such a one can also be able to stand. Because following will take sacrifice. In the same way, standing can take sacrifice. So the kind of faith we are talking about here is the kind that is full of faith, full of sacrifice. It is a risk affair. You may abandon your business for the sake of following Christ. I've seen men and women leave their own employment. I've seen men and women leave their own families. I've seen men and women abandon everything they could have started as far as their family project is concerned, only to follow Jesus. I remember one man of God who left his job on the mines. In those days, to work on the mines, those were the people. If you worked on the mines in those days, even parents wanted to wed their children to minors. If you are not working on the mines, they cannot give you their daughter. I'm talking about those days. Bear with me, you people that are for yesterday. But in our time, that's how it used to be. The man was an artisan. At his prime time of his vocation. And the God spoke to him. Serve me. When he announced before his family, fam family members that he was leaving his employment, they said, now we know that these churches you go to have confused you. Who have you seen do such a thing? You'll be the first one. And if you suffer, never come to, back to ask for help. But as I'm speaking, to cut a long story short, the man is a giant of a man in the kingdom. If it is in terms of properties or wealthy, he also can be able to testify. Whatever he could have amassed when he was working on the mines is nothing as compared to that which he has today. And when he left Bible college, when some of his lecturers, together with the principal, were telling him, advising him to go to Ndola, to come to Ndola and do ministry, whether it was at people's church, people's church or not, I can't tell, but it was Ndola. The man said, the Lord has led me to Kapoto. I'm not talking about Kapoto of today. I'm talking about Kapoto of that time. You people that have been able to go to Kitwe, you may know what I'm talking about here. Kapoto was a shunt compound. The man said, I'm going to Kapoto. The principal, together with the faculty, could not just take it kindly. What are you doing, you? You've got a family. Remember my story when I told you about going to where I am today. My own principal refused. He was feeling for me. Just like my pastor then. His leaders were feeling for him. But because God had spoken, he had to go. And you can imagine Kapoto where nothing was coming towards him in terms of appreciation. And he had a family. So when we're talking about standing brethren, let's not take it lightly. There's something much more. There's something deeper. There's something widespread. It's not a small thing. It may take sacrifice. It may be risky. Your own family members may look at you and say, now he's mad. Your children may be tender, toddlers, and you're saying you're going a certain way because the Lord has spoken to you. They may call the police because they will not want to understand what you're telling them. Humanly speaking, it may not make sense. But the reality, brethren, is this. The things of the Lord have never made sense in as far as human standards are concerned. And they will never make sense. They will never make sense. This is why, as we are talking about this theme, standing firmly in Christ for supernatural victories, we must be aware of that which is involved. Lest we are misled. Lest we should come and say we were not told. By the grace of God, I came all the way from Rimlunga to come and stand before you and tell you the truth. If we're going to stand firmly in Christ Jesus, 
expecting the supernatural victories can begin to take place one or the other, it will take a faith. And the kind of faith that it will take, it is that which is blended, sandwiched with risky or sacrifice. That's the ingredient. That's the combination. In the absence of that, there's no way we can attain any kind of firmness in as far as our standing is concerned. I know people that left college. How many know Bishop Smusa? You, you, know, you all know him. Our second assistant, Bishop Smusa. Now at Maranatha. He was in, he was at, in the university doing engineering. Not that he was a Dow student. He was one of the best students. God spoke to him. And he left. Where he is today, we cannot even say much. If we know him, we've seen him, we have a testimony about him. His own brother also did the same thing in Canada. The father was expecting him to become, is it a doctor or whatever? Then all he does is to branch off and go into a theological school. The father says, said, this is the last time you and me are going to meet. But whatever the father said was never to be. Because later on, it was proved wrong. The man became a giant of a servant of the Lord. And in terms of wealth, which the father was looking for, he could not count. Now, I'm just trying to highlight well, a number of things that can happen to somebody. This is not to suggest that tomorrow, go and tender a resignation letter. God has a way he speaks to us. God has a way he ministers to individuals. I don't know in which areas God is going to minister to you as he's provoking you to stand fame in Christ Jesus. Many could be the diverse ways that God may use as he's ministering to you and to me and every other person that has received the calling from him. If another person left employment, as for you, you may leave your business. When you leave your business, for another person, they may leave their town. Like it happened to Abraham. He had to leave the place where he was born, where he grew up, where he was connected in as far as business is concerned. He left it to go where the Lord was going to show him. A place which was, I can't tell. And you can imagine in those days, if today when you look at the forests, we are saying this is a thick forest. I wonder as to how in those days the forests were looking. Because not many people were there in those days. To think that maybe you can find a footpath. I wonder as to what kind of routes he was using. Who was there to make roads? Who was there to make those footpaths from one point to the other? I should think he must have been the pioneer in as far as road making is concerned. Because what we were talking about Abraham going to places which were not inhabited. Being led by God to a place known as Canaan. Now I look at that journey. I see nothing but sacrifice. The kind that is full of, you know, an element of risk. Risking his own family. So brethren, as we continue to look at this theme, let's bear in mind that it is not as easy as we thought. We may need some ingredient of some kind. In the same way we do as we are preparing some meal, if our meal is going to be tasty, we add up these other things to that meal or that menu. And at the end of the day, we're able to say we have eaten and we've enjoyed. That same principle may apply even in the kingdom. To stand, we don't just stand without certain ingredients. We stand with a complete packaged, you know, uh, menu where everything that is required is added on. So this evening, we are emphasizing the point. When Jesus was talking about faith or the kind of belief system which was lacking in the lives of the disciples, I want to believe he was talking about nothing but the kind that is full of sacrifice or the kind which may be risky. That's number one. Number two, before we can wrap it up, that which we can look up. When Jesus was talking about, you know, this faith or this belief system, I should think he must have been talking about, you know, the kind where you believe before any sign. As he was speaking to uh, Thomas, 
being one was quite problematic in a, you know, on the team of the disciples. At one point, according to the book of John chapter 20, because it so happened that, you know, Thomas could not believe that Jesus Christ had resurrected. He told his friends that I will not believe until I touch him on the side of his body. So when Jesus appeared another time, he found Thomas present with his disciples. And he said, Thomas, come. Now, come and do what you are saying. But before he could even do anything, Thomas began to acknowledge the lordship of Jesus Christ, my Lord. That statement is a t statement of humility. However, Jesus went on to say this. Now you believe because you have seen me. However, blessed are those that believe and yet they have not seen. So, when we're talking about this kind of faith, it's a kind where you don't need signs. It's a kind where you don't know how it's going to touch you. In as far as these great things to do with supernatural occurrences are concerned. There are times when I'm in a service, I'm wondering, how is the Lord going to do it? I want to discover that I'm just wasting my time. The best I could do is to just to leave it in, in his hands. All that is required of you and me is to have faith. The kind where you don't have to look at this or that sign. It doesn't require that it rains before we can tell that surely the Lord is going to visit us. It doesn't require that, you know, we may experience some kind of shaking as it were for the apostles at the time they were praying before we can believe that the Lord is going to undertake for, the, for us. It may be as quiet as it is and the Lord can still visit us and grant it to us even the supernatural victories. All that we require to do is to blend our faith in the way we ought to do by having to understand that the kind of faith that Jesus was talking about is a sacrificial type, the risk type, the kind that when other people look at you, especially those who don't believe, they may think there's something out of your senses. Are we ready for that? That's the question we can pose. Are we ready for that? There are times when we're too much in a comfort zone. The Lord can deliberately push you a bit. I know what happened to me. That I can be where I am today is purely by the grace. Hallelujah. I told you about how for the first time when I arrived in Mlunga, I could sit on a brick as a stool or as a chair. And I could not have my lunch because in the first place, I felt weighed down by the atmosphere or circumstances. I began to wonder how did I find myself in this place? Did I hear God nicely or I was using my own mental capabilities. But before long, I began to understand the Lord was involved with me. I risked my life, brethren, to go to a place I didn't know. I had no connections. The only thing that I knew was there are POG churches there in Mongo. But where I went, there was no POG church. There was no one whom I knew. And I left my daughters back on the copper belt. But today, it's a different story. I may not have amassed the whole world, but in a humble way, I can be able to testify that the Lord has been gracious to me. Hallelujah. He has been gracious to me. And if he has been gracious to me, he can also do the same thing to you. All you need to understand or to acknowledge is the fact that Jesus, when he looked at the disciples and all the people that were Looking like we're in the faith, he could see that they didn't have a position that was consolidated. So he lamented, when the Son of Man shall come, we did find faith on earth. If it was to come today, we did find faith in your life and my life. That's a question we ought to ask ourselves. As we are bragging about standing fame in Christ, trusting God for supernatural victories. Do we have it that takes you and me to experience supernatural victories? Jesus is suggesting to you and me that we go the way of faith combined with sacrifice. Jesus is suggesting to you and me this evening that we go the route of faith combined with risky. As a matter of fact, whatever may be the situation, 
through his word we learn, according to the book of First Peter chapter 5, reading from verse 6 up to verse 11, especially 10 and 11 there, he says, after you've suffered for a little while, the Lord will establish you. Hallelujah. Meaning is a God who cannot abandon you in that situation. Even when we might want to be complaining, you may be so close to you, except because of the anxiety, the fear coupled with unbelief, you may not be tell, able to tell that he's right by your side. He's one who has said, he shall not leave us nor forsake us, but he shall be with us all the days of our lives. So child of God, with the suggestion the Lord Jesus Christ is making to you and me this evening, I want also to add on to the suggestion by, by saying, do not fear. Your God knows what you need. It's not easy, brethren, that we can be coming here every day for this 21 days praying and fasting. Can't you see sacrifice there? Can't you see that you have abandoned something you could have liked to do? Other people are watching Manchester. Other people have gone to the shopping mall. Other people have traveled to Chingola. Other people are doing whatever they are doing to, you know, just please themselves. But you've chosen to come and endure the time in the service. For that kind of service, unless he's a God, I don't know. Maybe he can fail to undertake for you. But I believe whatsoever it is you have put in, whatsoever it is you are going to continue to put in, surely one day the Lord will come through for you. Hallelujah. As we are getting to the conclusion, I want to quickly refer you to the book of John, chapter 7. I'll just read it and say a few things, and from there we shall wrap it up. Verse 37 to 38. In the last day, that great day of the feast, John stood and cried, saying, If any man thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture saith, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. I see yet another you know, time when the word believe is being used. But the point I want to make is this. Aside of some of the things that I've highlighted to do with sacrificial faith, one more thing is it's neither by mighty nor by power, but by the spirit of a living God. Henceforth, tonight, as we're wrapping it up, we are going to call upon the name of our Lord. We are going to express our thirsty before him, that he may cause you and me to begin to overflow. There is need to experience an overflow. The kind of overflow that can only come by the effectual working power by the Holy Spirit. That in so doing, we can have an opportunity even to stand. When we stand because the Holy Spirit is the one inspiring us, our stand shall be so consolidated that no matter the wind known as Anna, nothing shall happen to you and me. Shall we rise up to our feet? Praise him. Come over and help us. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the glory of the Lord is here. Oh, yes, indeed, the power of our Lord is here. By his presence, we believe that the spirit of a living God is here. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the presence of the Lord is here. Pick it up. The presence of the Lord is here. Hallelujah. The 
presence of the Lord is here. Let your living waters flow over my soul. Let your Holy Spirit come and take control in every situation. to allow your Holy Spirit to begin to maneuver on this place in the name of Jesus and by the Spirit of a living God. Church, we are going to do one funny thing here. We are going to go to the Sunday school as I'm going to request that we do that which under normal circumstances we may not be able to do. When I look at the Sunday school being our own children, you discover that many a time the issue of feeling shy may not be there. Especially when it comes to, you know, the whole idea of being excited. Especially as they are playing together. Now I want to suggest something to you. If we are saying that Jesus, if we are calling upon Jesus, we must remember that if we are going to be filled in or to be clothed with his power, it is as we just pour out before him. It is as we call upon his name. So this evening, we are going to give a shout of Jesus at the count of three. And from there, I'm going to declare a number of things before we can wrap it up. The Bible tells me that if you are going to be ashamed of me before the people, 
I shall also be ashamed of you before my father. We are in the presence of the Lord. As a matter of fact, God desires the kind of faith that is only, can only be found in the life of a child. Now this evening, it is being suggested to us that we get back to Sunday school by having to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. Are we ready? Are we ready? Are we ready? One, two, three, Jesus! Just worship him as you call upon his name, Akabaya. Remind the These are your children, Master. Yes, you know where they are. Consolidate their steps, O oh God, as you're pouring out your spirit upon their lives. Jesus' his name. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. Yes, Jesus. Touch somebody here. 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 May your presence, Holy Spirit, come. Yes, come. Yes, come. Yes, come. There you are. Receive the touch of the Lord. He's yours. Receive the power from on earth. Jesus' name. Receive the power from on high. Jesus' name. Sweep over. Sweep over by your power and your presence. As I speak, supernatural are victories. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. You are feeling a sensation in your body. Just open up. 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 Lose yourself before Jesus. Lose yourself before Jesus. That sensation is not you. It's the Lord coming through for you. Pour out. Jesus' name. Yes. Touch somebody here. Yes! 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 More of your power by your presence. Jesus' name. May you be established in the kind of faith that shall produce supernatural victories for you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, receive the Holy Spirit. Yes, receive the power. Jesus' name. I decree and declare, you shall never be the same. Go out there and win battles. Go out there and win battles. Did you lose a battle yesterday? Did you lose a battle yes last week? Did you lose a battle last month? I decree and declare, go and win battles. As I command every foul spirit, get out and go. Demons of fear, demons of anxiety, demons of unbelief, I curse you as I speak the liberty of the spirit upon the people of God. He is here and he taught God. Enjoy him from now and forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's once more put our hands and appreciate God. Hallelujah. Amen. Please take your seat. We are almost five minutes we have done. Amen. Thank you. Are we blessed the church? Are we blessed? One more usher. Please help our elder. One more ushers. The 17th evening, if you have come with a tithe and offering, you have an opportunity to give. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you. Reverend Michael Mwansa, we are blessed. Hallelujah. From Sunday till today, we have been blessed. From tomorrow, we are moving into a prophetic kind of service. The man of God is, I'm sure, I'm sure he might have reached. Mom, he has... Prophet has come. I think it's on. It's on, eh? 
Uh, where is uh, prophet is at the back? Hallelujah, amen. Uh, let's put our hands to appreciate and welcome prophet Charles Malia, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Thank you, thank you. So, we are moving from we have heard foundations have been laid from tomorrow. We come to receive the word, hallelujah. So, please uh, don't sleep at home. Encourage our friends. Prophet Charles Valia is not a new to house of prayer. This, he has even received the membership by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Welcome, man of God. Welcome, man of God. Pastor Mansa, when you travel, may God be with you. We are blessed. You will come back again. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good to have a strong fundamental teaching which the man of God has been releasing. May God bless you. Shall we all stand? Shall we all stand? And also please cover him. And he determined to travel tomorrow early morning. Change man of God. Any change? Uh, he's planning to leave early morning tomorrow back to Limulunga. Uh, cover his journey in prayer. Our love and prayers are with you. May see you this for the powerful ministry. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the great blessing. The day one, you stood with us. Oh, the servants of God, you used them mightily. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for what you have accomplished. Even from Sunday till today, you used also mightily your servant minds, our God. We pray your continuous grace to overflow, God. The word which he has released shall bear fruit in house of prayer family, in our lives, in my life. Thank you, Jesus. And we are able to testify. We pray for his ministry. We pray for his family. Bless the mercy traveling tomorrow. Give him a safe journey. To continue to use him on God. Father, we pray for even bringing Prophet Charles Valia safe to us to take over from tomorrow until we break the fast on Sunday. We pray God's anointing will flow over him. Father, we pray for the entire house of prayer family tonight. We pray, God, you will continue to bless us. Father, your people have been dedicated and to pray and fast. Some are not here, but still they are fasting and praying wherever they are. We pray we shall have our supernatural victory, O oh Jesus, O oh God. Every prayer, every covenant we made, may God answer, O oh God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the sacrificial giving of tithe and offering. We ask you to bless them, O oh Jesus. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen and amen. May God bless you richly. Have a blessed evening. I will give you some gift. God will bless you. Once again, Pastor, thank you for the powerful ministry. God bless you.